Hello and welcome everybody to yet another of my endgame build highlight videos. Today we're gonna take a look at the Blade Master, the physical Cadence Warborn set Blade Master that I was using in the Season 4 of the Grim Dawn Community League. Even though this is a character that was played in a league, so in a like modded environment, it is not using any of the like non-vanilla items, so you can make this character as it is with vanilla items as well, you don't need to play this in any kind of mod. Now keep in mind that this is a endgame build highlight video, so this character does require specific gear to work. In this case it needs the Warborn set, without the Warborn set there isn't really any like reason for you to play this character in the first place. If you don't have the Warborn set and you're just looking for like any like beginner friendly blade master, you're much better off playing a cold dual wield or like piercing dual wield blade master using things like the Demopterion Slicers. Now of course there are also like other pierce blade masters that are really really good for endgame and also a couple of cold ones. Um, so like why play physical? Um, the reason why I played physical mostly in this league was because of the Warborn set. The Warborn set, or rather its helmet, gives you permanent uptime to the Warcry ability. The Warcry ability is one of the best, if not the best, um, debuff ability in the game. So if you want to be like really, really tanky and have proper damage reduction on enemies up all the time, then the Warborn set is a stellar choice for that. Using this build I was able to defeat pretty much all the face tankable super bosses in the league such as the ones from Vanilla, like Mugdrogan, Ravager, Kalagadra, but also the ones from the league like Galacross and Aranea. Of course this build is also viable to farm Shadow Realm. You can farm Shadow Realm all the way to 75 to 76. That should be no problem with this build. In the league I was farming SR15 in the compressed SR. SR15 in the league basically meant a 75 to 76 run. Now when it comes to leveling this character, if you would like to level this character, I would heavily suggest you to just play with a two-hander and level as Physical Force Wave. That way, you can really like level your physical devotions, and you don't need to like respect too many devotions. The only devotion that you would like to use if you're playing a two-hander is you would like to use the Kraken devotion, but Kraken devotion doesn't need like any levels, and you're not like missing out on any other of the physical devotions that you want to level. So yeah, you can like easily respec Kraken later. It's much much easier to do it this way than to for example level as Code or Pierce and then switch over to Physical later, um, having to like re-level those Physical Devotions. Pierce actually wouldn't be like that bad to do for leveling though because at least you share a couple of the resistance reduction um, Devotions like the Assassin's Blade. That is pretty good. So you can also like level as dual wield pierce, but in general, if you want to like stick to the damage type, then I would level as two hundred physical force wave, and then just like switch over to just like dual wield warborn build later at level ninety four. Now let's check out the skill point allocation for this build. This is what I'm using in the end game. This is the final iteration of the build. We have twenty six out of sixteen points and cadence. We have enough gear so that you get like plus ten points to cadence. Keep in mind, plus ten is the max that you can get here for any skill in the game. Pretty much one point in finding form gives us eleven points here. Gives us plus four targets on cadence, so four additional targets on the third hit. Dead momentum. 21 out of 12 points, you want to have this as high as possible as well. 22 would be of course even better, but 21 is like the highest I could manage here with this gear and the setup without like making too many sacrifices. And this basically just gives you a massive, massive boost for physical and internal trauma damage and uh, is pretty much the second most important ability in this build right after Cadence. Field Command, 16 out of 12 points, you want to keep this at a even amount of points, right, 12, 14, 16, 18 and so on, because every even point gives you 1% additional armor and of course you want this for the offensive and defensive ability, and this is permanent, um, which is why in my opinion it's generally also better than say Fighting Spirit, which is nice to have of course as at least a 1 pointer or even up to 12 points, but it is a, well, temporary buff only. Only one point in squad tactics. Now if you want more attack speed, if you need more attack speed, you can put more points here. Um, but there was like, first of all, I needed the points elsewhere more badly. And second of all, attack speed was really, 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 really good on this character. So these points weren't quite as important as they usually are. Up to 12 points, however, 
you get pretty good value out of this skill as well like up to 12 out of 12 points is totally fine don't put more than 12 points though that is never really necessary or like worth it um weapon pool skills we're gonna talk about these quite in a bit here we have more coins advantage and zoran's technique here from the soul tree and a couple more from the nightblade tree but i'll cover them a bit more in depth here in a second a war cry this is the most important debuff ability this entire build will have this one at 18 out of 12 points will have 31 percent damage reduction in an aoe around you to all enemies will debuff all of their damage including all of their debuffs that they themselves use on you by 31 percent so this is an absolutely amazing ability you need to pick it and well this is the reason why we want to pull up time on this and this is the reason why we're playing the warborn set because the warborn gives us a full up time on this 4.5 second recharge and 5 second duration on the debuff also attached to that we have the break morale debuff which reduces enemy physical resistance by 45 for four for five seconds uh, 45 is a very 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 high number or a resistance debuff like this and I mean it also has like full up time and 22 po two points with the set we have it maxed out to the max uh, yeah I mean just absolutely amazing for the exclusive we have Odoron's Rage 16 of 12 points just gives you like percent physical percent internal trauma damage percent offensive ability and internal trauma damage flat as well as movement speed I mean overall just like I mean better than Bulwark because we can't use Bulwark anyway on a build like this. Um, so yeah, it's first of all the only choice and second of all it's good anyway. So no reason to like think about it that much to be honest. 10 out of 10 points in military conditioning. Uh, this is a very very good tankiness passive, like passive for tankiness which gives you physique and health. Um, the scaling is kind of bad after 10 points though, so yeah, don't put more than 10 points here. Only one point in veterancy. Veterancy makes you remove uh, part of your physique requirement for armor so you can put more coins in, points in cunning this can be really really good on some builds where you just want to like cunning stack and physical and pure builds would be builds where you would like to cunning stack um, but on this build I don't really have like that many physical points available to me so only one point for five points here is what I was using still 12% physique requirement reduction which means I need only like 914 physique to for example wear this piece of uh, warborn um, chest which otherwise would need a thousand and thirty five physique in this case only nine hundred and eleven decorated soldier is a passive in which you want to invest a little bit more points into uh, i have this at a soft cap at eight out of eight points as well because the slow resistance and elemental resistance scaling is pretty good all the way to eight points so you want eight points for that like slow and elemental resistance and on top of that, you get like physical damage, so it's not bad at all. Like, all of the stats here are being used. Scars of Battle, 8 out of 8 points. Now, you want this high enough so that you have like full armor absorption together with the Warborn set. You want to reach 100% armor absorption, right? Um, Warborn set gives you some, this passive gives you some. Then you could also use like some components. I'm using one component called a sacred plating for armor absorption. That's it. Now, if I was using another component, then I could get away with like less points here. But you also want to use it for like the stun resistance and the bleed resistance and the freeze resistance kind of anyway. So yeah, eight points here is just like really nice together with the warborn set. Fits well together. Works. Um, so yeah, that's what I have here. Nightblade tree. Now this is more like the support tree in this case. We have 18 points in dual blades though. We have maxed out the physical resistance you can get from this passive. And also this gives us like flat piercing damage, which we will at least on the cadence hit convert to physical as I will show you later. Three more weapon pool skills. I'll talk about these in a second. One point in blade spirits because um, first of all, blade spirit is good at applying devotion procs. Like for example, assassin's mark, really, really good for stuff like that. Um, and also we have 20 points in Blade Master and Night Blade rather anyway because of execution. So might as well like only put one point here and have a like kind of like pet that applies resistance reduction for you pretty nicely. Uh, one point in Ring of Steel and one point in Circle of Slaughter. This is just nice like to have 20% like 20% for two points fumble. Fumble is a debuff that makes enemies hit their 
I like rather miss their melee attacks. So 20% of enemy melee attacks miss on you basically on top of all the dodge that you have, on top of defensive ability and so on. So it's just like another like nice defensive layer to have. And I mean for two points it's basically for free and this build has literally zero buttons to press anyway. So yeah, it's pretty really, 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 really nice. 10 points, rather 12 points for magnetic burst. 7 points Shadow Dance and 3 points, or rather just 1 point in Elemental Awakening. This 1 point here is just there for like 9% Elemental Resistance. Like 1 point for 9% Resistances is pretty okay. That's pretty good value. Um, also we have the Breath of Belgothian, gives us like less cooldown whenever we do a wielding on this heal from Panetic Burst. And the Burst, well, gives us Offensive Ability, Total Speed, you want all of that. 12 points is a very, very nice uh, sweet spot. If you have more points available, you can like go to 15 and so on. There are a couple more like decent points, but 12 is a very, very good sweet spot to have. And again, we are already kind of um, like skill starved, so not too many like skill points to play around with here. Shadow Dance actually got buffed here in the latest patch on wall 197, so now you have better like uh, dodge percentages after 7 points. 7 points used to be a sweet spot in the past. And you would only need, like, you would only get like 1% past 7 points, like 1% dodge. But now you get 2% as well, so it is definitely like worth it to put more points in Shadow Dance now. It might be, for example, worth it to like pull some more points from Vado Shadow now and put them into Shadow Dance instead. Vado Shadow, however, does also have minus offensive ability as an aura, so it's kind of the same as like defensive ability. And instead of dodge, you make the enemy have lower total speed so instead of dodging like instead of having a higher chance to dodge abilities you basically slower the enemy mostly attack and casting speed that's the important part here so you do also take less damage by putting points here which one is really like worth putting to the soft cap now like this to 12 and this to like less points than 10 or this to 10 and this to 7 i don't really know anymore right now honestly like both seem really really good in their own way um, feel free to like experiment yourself. This is what I have and had right now. 10 points here, 7 points here. Worked. Uh, but there might be a little bit more optimal way to play this now. Phantasmal Armor. Also a really, really nice passive actually, but only I have one point here. Um, the reason I only have one point here is I just don't have skill points. Like I need skill points somewhere else first and then I could put more here. The passive, however, is really, really good, and if you have spare skill points and you want more armor, you want more freeze, you want more petrify resistance, you want more pierce resistance, then feel free to put more points here. It is an amazing passive, and uh, well, armor uh, is being scaled up pretty nicely here on this character. We have 4,000 armor right now, so if you want even more, putting more points here is never bad at all. Next up, we have an enemy of murder, or rather, last in this tree. And then we have the murder at 11 out of 12 points. 11 out of 12 points is the like sweet spot when it comes to the percent cunning scaling, right? Since we are playing a physical build, we do benefit a lot from cunning scaling. And this one scales the cunning, which then like scales the physical damage. And you get at least 2% per point all the way to 11 points. And then you can see at point number 12, I would only get like 1% more cunning and that's when it starts to not be worth it anymore. On top of that, you also get like more damage to humans, like more damage to enemies like Alexander or Fabius. Can be pretty helpful in many situations as well, but only that alone is not gonna be like worth it for me personally to like put more than one, or like rather more than 11 points here in this passive. Now, when it comes to the weapon pool skills, um, I was gonna say, I was gonna talk about these a bit more in depth, right? So we are playing Cadence. Cadence itself cannot rock weapon pool skills however cadence is only the third hit so you want a weapon pool skill or rather you can proc weapon pool skills on hit number one and two and for that we have makomi's advantage at 21 percent chance to be used zona technique at 21 percent chance to be used bergothel shears at 21 percent chance to be used warring death at 21 percent and then last execution at 19 percent chance to be used uh, if you add up all the percentages you will um get to 101% chance to use one of those five abilities. You generally want like around 100% chance to use weapon pool skills because then every single default attack will not be a default attack but instead will be a weapon pool skill, magnifying your damage and so on and so on. Um, if you have 
like lots of skill points on a build, you can also like choose one or two of these weapon pool skills and just pump them for more damage. In this case, again, I don't have skill points. I have skill points in Warcry and Cadence. Those are like the main skills here and weapon pool skills are more like a secondary here. They only are there for the first and second hit to charge up Cadence quicker. Now, what is interesting though, some of these weapon pool skills force you to use both weapons at the same time. Pretty much all of them do actually. And because of that, you have a chance to like also charge your Cadence quicker. This means that sometimes you won't hit Cadence every third attack, but actually every second attack. And that is obviously a ginormous DPS boost as well. Which is why, yeah, we have like a couple of points on these weapon pool skills here. Even though they don't have like heavy investment and don't deal like lots of damage themselves, they do help you to, well, get those Cadence procs out more often and more quickly than usual. For the devotions, let's check out devotions. I am using pretty much no actives in the tier threes actually, like you can see I don't use Blind Fury, I don't use shift Shifting Sands. Um, reason here is you could use Blind Fury on something like a Deathstalker Relic, but without Deathstalker Relic, which I actually didn't have in the league, it is pretty good on this build though, you lack skills as a Nightblade soldier, as a like Nightblade, as a Blade Master rather, you wouldn't lack like active abilities that can proc devotions compared to say a Warlord, where you could just like put this onto your Guardians of Imperion. I mean, I could proc, proc some stuff with Ring of Steel as well, as you can see, the Ring of Steel is still unattached. But honestly, Ring of Steel has such a long cooldown and like proccing something like Blind Fury or Shifting Sands with Ring of Steel that like procs me like once every three or even less than that seconds, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not gonna be good, right? Mm. And uh, I rather take, for example, the flat physical damage on the other one here. Just like boost all my default attacks more so than the active. And yeah, that's like the main reason why I don't have these actives on Shifting Sands and other one. The actives that I do have though are Warcry, Dryad, um, or rather this is this is Ulza's Decree bound to Warcry, this is Dryad bound to Blitz, this is um, Blade Spirits bound to Assassin's Mark, and then we have Cadence bound to Maul. Um, so you always need Assassin's Mark, right? It is mandatory for physical devotions, I mean for, for any physical build. Physical resistance reduction is a must-have, it's more important than anything else here. Maul is great if you are um, not using like too many big single hits. Well, Cadence might sound like a big single hit, but you're still like dual wielding and you're like, you know, attacking with two weapons and so on, so armor does affect you more negatively than if you were, for example, playing a 200 build. So Maul is also like pretty, pretty good still here. And then for healing, or like for defense, I'm using Dryad, Turtle, and Ghoul. This might seem like a bit overkill, but keep, keep in mind this is hardcore. And I just wanted this character to, you know, uh, defeat super bosses without a sweat, like without like any chance of failure. So there might be like one or two safety nets too many here, you could argue. Um, if you want to just like speed farm with this on softcore, uh, feel free to like cut some defense, it's totally fine. So why Dryad and Blitz? Blitz's cooldown and Dryad's cooldown line up pretty well. So whenever you Blitz, you basically get the ceiling from Dryad. Um, why Cadence on Maul and not on Assassin's Mark? Uh, this is debatable to be honest as well. But in the end, the TLDR would be Blade Spirit has a good enough proc chance of Assassin's Mark, especially on single targets. And this build was mostly made to kill super bosses, like single targets. So this works very well for that. And Maul, if it's attached to Cadence, the leech of the attack will heal you. If you bind us to Blade Spirits or whatever, then. The leech won't work, right, because Bladesford is a pet um, and devotions like Maul only heal you when bound to the pet if they have weapon damage. Like for example, Bat would heal you if you bind it to Blade Spirits, but Maul does not. Uh, so that's the reason why we have Cadence on Maul and Blade Spirits on Assassin's Mark. I mean, Warcry and Uzzah's Decree again here, the 
the 100% chance on attack and the cooldowns, they just line up perfectly. It works very well. And the ghoul, I mean, to any passive that ideally uh, has no energy reserve on either. So honestly, it would be actually better on other ones rage than a few command because few command does have energy reservation. All right, now when it comes to the gear, of course, we are using the Warborn set, right? The four-piece Warborn set is basically like the core of the build. I am using a Combustion Band and a Ring of the Black Matriarch. Each have physical resistance reduction. Black Matriarch is mandatory, has plus two skill points to Cadence as well. Attack speed, cutting, physical damage. And the proc has 10% physical resistance reduction. Just amazing. The Combustion Band, not quite as mandatory. You could play something like a Gargaball Ring instead can work very well as well. But the Combustion Band proc also has 8% physical resistance reduction and attack speed, so it is overall like not bad at all to have. It's pretty good as well. The amulet here is a Pyrrhus Eye of Baranath. Feel free to play a Kaisan amulet with like great affixes on top instead. Um, but yeah, Pyrrhus Eye is honestly after the latest buff. It's a pretty good amulet again. Like you can definitely use it. It is not bad at all. For the belt, we're using a Ugnaborg Girdle. This one has a unyielding of attack, Rion suffix. I don't think you need exactly these affixes, I wouldn't say so, but anything that's like good and works for your build will work here. The medal is a Mark of Harvul. This one has a Dreadlord's prefix. Dreadlord's prefix is really good in this case because it gives me 7% leech. That is global leech added over here in your page and you can see 7%. That's almost my entire leech. I literally only have the Red Lord's Prefix and the Ghoul Devotion and those two together give me 11% leech. That's all I have and need here in this build. There are other ways to gain leech like on a component on gloves or like, you know, components on weapons and so on and so on. But honestly, this is just better. Like this, this works and that's really, really, really good. Of the wolf suffix gives you physique and cunning. Of readiness is probably better. Like OA and DA is probably better on a metal slash jewelry slot. But of the wolf is not bad either. Like physique and cunning. Getting more physique means you need like to put less points in physique. You can put more points in cunning. And cunning is what you want anyway. So it's not bad. Boots, vigorous of incantations. Vigorous gives you HP, incantations, just like resistances, and road like 5% fizzlers on top and 4% armor. For the crafting bonuses, so those are amazing. The vigorous of incantations, you don't need them, right? Like the affixes are whatever, they're not even that good, honestly. You can get way better affixes here. Or uh, you can also ideally play something like um, Windshear Greaves. I think I wasn't playing Windshear Greaves in the league because I didn't have the blueprint for it. But Windshear Greaves are really, really nice with the added dodge proc and so on. It's really, really, really good for Blade Monsters. It's insane. For the pounds, I'm using a Stalwart. Cooper Cover Choices of Nature's Bounty. Now this one has plus 3 to Deadly Momentum and plus 3 to Lethal Assault. If you're using Lethal Assault on top, that would be of course even better then. Uh, the build doesn't use ABB slash Lethal Assault at all. You don't need it. It's more like a DPS loss and also there's no skill points anyway that you can uh, put there in the first place. But a plus 3 to Deadly Momentum is still amazing. And uh, because you can again like get affixes to your liking here, um, I wouldn't say Star Wars of Nature's Bounty is the best on slot here, far from. You can get way better affixes here for sure, but these work for the build and they worked for me. In my opinion, just like these pants are generally more flexible than like Chosses of Bob Ross. But you can of course like play Bob Ross pants instead, those work as well as though. Not too bad either. The weapon, the second weapon of choice here, there are actually like a couple of choices you can do here, like you can use here. But the Aether Warped Cleaver is in my opinion one of the best, if not of the best, or a Blade Master at least. You have, uh, first of all, like the Cadence modifiers, right? You have better AoE with Cadence, you have more damage on Cadence. And on top of that, you also get plus three to Bago Shears, which is the ability over here that I'm using in the Nightblade tree. It's not like amazing, amazing, but it's not bad to have these three points, it does help you with the proc chance of like weapon pool skills as well to get to that like 100% weapon pool skill proc chance that you want. And more importantly, you can get something like a earthbound prefix. 
and a of alacrity suffix. Now of alacrity of course gives you attack speed and earthbound prefix gives you physical resistance on a weapon which is insane. And it also gives you the earthbound proc right whenever you're getting hit for 8 seconds on a 16 second cooldown you will get 30% additional armor and that is just like beyond crazy against certain bosses. Um, it's an amazing proc to offensively that usually you only get like an armor, but this is on a weapon on top, so it's just really really good. Um, I love it. I actually like it a lot for Blade Master at least. Um, this weapon doesn't work that well on other classes in my opinion, or rather you might need even crazier affixes than to make it work. But if you're playing a Cadence build, and especially a Cadence Blade Master, which doesn't really benefit from using a shield. That's the thing, like, if I was playing a Witchblade, for example, I would just be playing a shield instead of this weapon. Pretty much any other, like, Cadence class where you don't want another weapon for damage, I would just play a shield instead and, like, be tanky because of that, like, on Hardcore. But on a Blade Master, you actually become tankier from dual wielding because of this, like, this passive over here, right? You get 15% Fizzress from dual blades, from dual wielding, which is almost as much as a shield gives you. Not quite, but almost. But you also, you know, like, get better heal. All the weapon pool skills work only with dual wielding. So it's just better to do with on a blade master, right? And then, well, which weapon do you want? It's kind of only this weapon here, and it's honestly perfect for blade master. It's generally not used much on blade master because blade master doesn't use physical damage a lot. But if you're playing a physical blade master, which this is, then it's the perfect weapon. For the components, we're using two seas of might, right? One in each weapon. This uh, gives us another 4% physical resistance each. Overall, we have 50%, 49% physical resistance, which is for a dual wield blade master, I would say pretty insane. And then also like 4k armor. Again, for dual wielding, no armor, like no shield. Uh, it's pretty insane. And then we have like permanent 31% damage reduction on Warcry. Um, like those things together on top of the dodge and the farm of Ringo Steel. Just makes this build like, or a dual with Blade Master at least, ridiculously tanky against physical damage. And that was one of the main goals of this character, and it did achieve that. And I hope you're gonna enjoy this build, like watching it or playing it yourself. Thanks for watching.